Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas Armstrong, and I'd like to talk with you about a new concept in special education which promises to transform the way that we help kids with special needs and learning disabilities to help them achieve success in school and life. This concept is neurodiversity, and it suggests that we honor and celebrate the differences in brains in the same way that we honor and celebrate biodiversity and cultural diversity. We don't say of a calla lily that it has pedal deficit disorder. We honor it for what it has, what it is. Similarly, we don't say of someone who has skin color that's different from our own, that they have a pigmentation disability or disorder. That would be racist. Similarly, we ought not to be looking at differences among brains, differences among learning styles, and saying these are learning disabled kids. We ought to be thinking about them as learning different. We ought to be talking about learning diversities instead of learning differences. Now, in this video, what I'd like to do is talk about some specific strategies and tools that you can use to help your student or your child, if you're a parent, achieve success in the classroom and in life. First of all, the most important strategy that you can use is to find out as much as you can about the strengths, talents, and abilities of your student or your child. There's a lot of research out there indicating that kids who are diagnosed with learning disabilities have many gifts. In one study, they looked at dyslexic students who were able to identify impossible objects, the kind that are like, for example, a Mobius strip or the images in an Escher uh, piece of art. And they're able to determine more quickly and more efficiently whether or not that object is impossible to build or possible to build. In other words, they have excellent three-dimensional visualization capabilities. They also have many artistic gifts. I found this to be true when I was teaching as a special education teacher in Canada in the United States. They also, uh, studies suggest, often have entrepreneurial abilities. One study suggested that up to a third of self-employed business people in the United States had some form of learning disability. And this compared with only 1% of managers in an established corporation. So we see that uh, people with learning dis disabilities, learning differences, learning diversities have many gifts. Now there are specific learning strategies that you can use that build on these gifts. For example, you can have students work with clay in creating words that they're needing to learn. So to help them with their difficulties in learning words or in learning letter shapes and so forth, use their three-dimensional ability, their ability to create three-dimensional forms, in this case, words out of clay, and you really use a strength to help them uh, bring up a weakness, essentially. Another strategy is to uh, suggest that they illustrate any written work that they do so that they can have both the picture and the written word side by side. And finally, in the school or at home, they ought to be encouraged to think about creating their own business. In the school, this might, be, might involve creating a curriculum around their own business or around the idea of being self-employed. Now, there's an assistive technology that's very useful for students who've been diagnosed with learning disabilities, and that is the program Dragon Naturally Speaking. This is a program that can be used on the computer or on the uh, iPad or iPhone, which enables a student to speak into the computer, and that computer will translate the spoken word into printed text. Another thing that students labeled learning disabled or dyslexic often do really well is they have good oral communication abilities. They're often good storytellers. They have good vocabulary. So they should have that strength utilized and not be caught up short simply because they have difficulty putting their ideas down on paper with pen and pencil. So this idea of speaking into the computer empowers them by using their strong oral skills to get written work done. And this can be very useful, not just for kids with learning disabilities, but for all kids. 
Now, we ought to also be thinking about positive career possibilities for students with learning disabilities or learning differences. Um, we ought to be thinking about matching the gifts that they have with the needs out there in the, work for, in the workplace. So, for example, with an individual who has this high three-dimensional thinking, this visual spatial learner, we ought to be thinking about careers like graphic designer or architect or artist. And also, we should be thinking about careers that involve being a self-employed business person, being an entrepreneur, because it seems that people with learning disabilities can be very successful in that area. We also ought to be inspiring these kids with positive role models of people, successful people out there in the real world who've had learning disabilities, but they've learned to minimize their difficulties and maximize their strengths to make something of themselves. And so we can tell these students about um, learning disabled individuals like Pablo Picasso or Charles Schwab or Muhammad Ali. And if we did this, we would really say essentially to our students, you know, these individuals were able to become very successful and so can you. Anyway, I hope that these strategies have been helpful to you um, in thinking about how to empower your child or your student who is labeled learning disabled. If you want to find out more about these strategies or more about the research that I've been talking about, you can get my book, which is called Neurodiversity in the Classroom, Strength-Based Strategies to Help Students with Special Needs Achieve Success in School and Life. Thanks so much for listening and watching, and I wish you all the very best in empowering your child or student to be the very best that they can be. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.